Hi everyone, it's Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved. I hope you're well. I'm in the car today. I've just gone to my local tyre place to get my tyre pressures checked because one of my tyres was a little low on pressure earlier on and I wanted to make sure that it was safe to drive. Um, it was about 2 psi down, so I just wanted to get the local tyre shop to check it. Everything's okay. It's just cold weather and gradual loss of tyre pressure. It's just a reminder that you should always check your tyres on a regular basis. But I want to talk to you today about range tests. It's something that came up in discussion yesterday based on the feedback that I gave someone about which electric car would be best suited to their particular needs. Now, range tests or test cycles are used by automakers to calculate how far a car can travel on a full battery pack. It's also used to give gasoline cars their official fuel economy figures. The problem being that they're not real world range tests, just like they're not real world fuel economy tests. For those who don't know, these tests are carried out on a rolling road or a dynamometer. And that dynamometer test is not very long. They don't drive the car until it runs flat. They don't drive the car until it runs out of fuel in its petrol tank or diesel tank. They drive the car for a specific number of minutes and then use data from that test cycle to then mathematically calculate the theoretical range of your vehicle or your theoretical fuel economy. That's fine, but unfortunately, that's not how it works in the real world. Now, there are some test cycles that are more realistic than others. The JC08 test cycle, for example, that's used in Japan is not very realistic to Western driving styles. It tends to overestimate range that a car can give on a full charge of its battery pack by as much as 50 or 60 miles. The NEDC test cycle, which is the new European driving cycle, it's about to be replaced by a newer driving cycle for Europe, is also particularly optimistic when it comes to real world range. The EPA test cycle, meanwhile, is the newest of them, at least for now, and that mimics US driving patterns pretty well. In other words, the EPA test cycle results that you're going to get are generally representative of what you can achieve if you are gentle with your new EV in the real world. So for example, I know people with the 2017 Nissan LEAF who are able to match or beat the EPA's 107 mile per charge rating for that vehicle. I don't know anybody who's managed to match the 155 mile NEDC rating for the same car. Now, because these tests are mathematically calculated, they're never going to be representative of every situation in the real world. They don't drive the cars around a physical track. They put the cars on a rolling road in a temperature controlled laboratory in test situations. Situations that you're not going to find in the real world that readily. Which brings us to the core of the question. Can you really trust range estimates from car companies who use these test cycles as a way of proving that their cars can travel a certain number of miles per charge? Well, we should note here that test cycle results are not carried out by the body that approves them. They're just approved. So the EPA doesn't test each and every car that goes on sale. It just approves the results from the automaker. And yes, it does spot tests to make sure those results are accurate, but it doesn't test each and every car it relies on the automakers to follow the predetermined test protocol and come up with an answer that looks about right. So while there might be a few miles of difference of deviation, generally EPA test scores are pretty good. Want my real world advice when it comes to EVs and range? If you're buying a car in the US or you're buying a car that has a US EPA test rating, you can take the EPA figure as a good starting point. So you can look at that and say, okay, that car probably does as many miles per charge as the EPA says it does. If you want to be pessimistic, 
just not be 10% off. Now, if you watched my Chevrolet Bolt EV review not so long ago, you'll note that I did actually knock 10% off the EPA range to give a real world range of about 200 miles per charge. For that car, I think that would be a really acceptable amount of range per charge. Similarly, the 2017 Nissan Leaf, I think we're probably safe to say that car probably easily manages 95 to 100 miles per charge. If you want to reach that EPA approved 107 miles, you're probably gonna to have to be quite a skillful driver. So back to the question. Someone said, does a Hyundai Ioniq really get the range that's claimed? Well, it's probably possible if the EPA test cycle has been approved, but I would knock 10% off in almost every situation, whether it's a Nissan Leaf, a Hyundai Ioniq, or a Tesla Model X. I would always knock 10% off the EPA range, just to give yourself a little bit of headroom. What's the worst that can happen? Either you're gonna discover that the car goes further per charge than you thought it could, or you're gonna find that the range estimate was spot on. Either way, you're not gonna be left stranded at the side of the road because you miscalculated. So there you go. That's how I would interpret range on an EV. Don't forget that you can like, comment, and subscribe. Support us on Patreon, and I'll be back tomorrow with a TEN Transport Evolve News Roundup. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and keep evolving.